Hey guys, what's going on? Have you been thinking about getting into 3D printing, but you're a little bit overwhelmed with all the different options out there? In this video, I'm gonna clearly define five simple steps to get you started on your 3D printing journey, all right? So stick around and let's get into it. All right, so step number one is understanding what 3D printing is. For the sake of this video, I'm gonna be talking about FDM printing. Think of a McDonald's ice cream machine. And you got your little cone and you pull down the little thing, you know, and it's kind of extruding the ice cream and you spin your cone around and it builds up. That's basically what 3D printing is, except replace ice cream with molten plastic. Essentially, your 3D printer is a robot with a little extruder on the end. It moves around the build plate based on the instructions you give it. It spits out a little string of plastic on the print bed and slowly, slowly builds up your 3D printed model, slice by slice by slice. Most FDM printers are made up of an extruder, a build plate, a couple of motors, all connected and hooked up to a little computer that sits inside of the chassis. Step number two that you need to know to get into 3D printing is filament. Filament is essentially the plastic that's used for your 3D printer. Well, not exactly. Filament is the way the plastic comes. It comes in a, like a long string wound up into a spool, kind of like a sewing thread. And you attach this filament spool onto your 3D printer, put it into the extruder, the extruder pulls it in there, it heats it up and spits out the molten plastic. There are a whole bunch of different kinds of filaments out there. You've got PLA, PETG, engineering filaments like carbon fiber nylon and soft rubbery filaments like TPU. These are a little bit more advanced. For this particular video, I'm only gonna be talking about PLA. PLA, it is the basic filament that even the most advanced 3D printers always come back to. This filament prints very well, it looks good, it prints easy, doesn't cause a lot of trouble, doesn't get stuck up easily, it prints at low temperatures, it's also rigid and also flexible, excellent material. Which brings me to step number three, choosing your first 3D printer. So this is where things get truly overwhelming. There are so many 3D printers out there. Where, you know, like, where do you know which printer to get? I hope that I'll be able to help you in this one. This is my own personal opinion. I'm gonna break this into three separate tiers. Essentially, the way I judge these printers is based on community support, ease of use, and beginner accessibility, and of course, budget. For a low budget, I'm gonna definitely pick the Ender 3. Creality's Ender 3 is a really good 3D printer. It's a relatively low cost, easy to use, 3D printer that's very reliable and comes out with very good prints. Number two, the Ender 3 S1 Pro. Ender 3 S1 Pro is everything the Ender 3 is, but super souped up. This thing is awesome. I love this 3D printer. It is my main 3D printer. I go back to it all the time. It has everything the Ender 3 has, but all the bells and whistles. All the mods that the whole modding community was out there doing, this thing comes stock. It's simple to use. You set it up. It takes 15 minutes to set up and you're ready to go. When I got the Ender 3 S1 Pro, it came about an hour before me, my wife and my kids were about to go out on a trip. I set this thing up and banged out my first print within, the, within that hour. We got that print out and it was working just fine and it has been since then. And for my high range budget option, I'm gonna be going with the Prusa i3 Mark III S Plus. This is considered to be the cream of the crop, top of the line printer out there. Okay, well, I mean, you know, for, you know, normal consumers, uh, hobbyists, right? I mean, there's 3D printers out there that can print in metal and all kinds of other crazy stuff. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about for the consumer market, the Prusa is considered to be the cream of the crop, top of the line awesomest printer. This thing comes in at about a thousand bucks. It is not cheap. I only recommend if you're going to go with the Prusa option, you go with the Prusa option that is fully assembled straight from the factory because otherwise you're going to be spending like a million hours plugging all the little things in and, and, and screwing every bolt, nut and bolt. And you know, if you're not into that kind of stuff, maybe pass on that and go with the fully assembled version. That takes me to step number four, your slicer. By the way, I put a lot of effort into creating this video for you guys. If you find that you're getting any kind of value out of it, I would truly appreciate a subscribe and maybe even a comment. That way we can appease the YouTube algorithm and kind of get this video out a little bit further. So the fourth step, once you have your 3D printer, is to pick a slicer. A slicer is essentially a piece of software on your PC 
that takes the 3D model and cuts it into little tiny slices and gives movement commands to the extruder on where to move to build the part, slice by slice by slice. And what I recommend is Cura. The reason I recommend Cura is because Cura is simple to use and it's as advanced as you need it to be in that particular level that you're in, right? So you start out on your 3D printing journey. You don't really know all that much about the slicer software. You get your STL file, your 3D printing file. You pop it into Cura. You pick the preset PLA option and boom, Bob's your uncle. You're on your way. You don't really need to go into it that much and once you start getting good at 3D printing and once you get more advanced, then you can keep going with Cura because Cura has all the options. Cura has every option you can possibly want from beginner to advanced. And that's why I like Cura. Also, by the way, it's free. That would be my option for step number four, which takes me into step number five. Where do you get those files for 3D printing? So you might be thinking to yourself, well, you know what? This all sounds well and good, but I'm not really, I don't know how to make 3D models on the computer. And this is where I got you covered because you don't need 3D modeling expertise to get you on your 3D printing adventure. Just like you don't need to be a graphic designer to print out coloring pages for your kids. It's the same thing. You go online and you download an STL file. So just so you know, an STL file is a file format that's used for 3D printing and it's used for a bunch of other stuff too when it comes to 3D models on the computer. And you can go online and download your STL file, send it off to your slicer. So where do you get those STL files from? So there's a whole bunch of different options here, but for the purpose of this video, I'm gonna tell you about Thingiverse. Thingiverse is a website that has a plethora of free STL files for you to download and 3D print. There is a huge community out there that know how to 3D model on the computer that have uploaded their 3D files to Thingiverse and you can just go on there and download whatever you want. And it's pretty much free. I really advise you to look into the legality before you download a file from, from Thingiverse and start trying to sell it. But if you're downloading it for yourself, there should be no problem. The other website that I would suggest is Printables by Prusa. Okay, there are a ton of 3D printing files on there as well. And if you want something a little more advanced, if you want something a little cooler or a little bit better, lots of people sell their STL files. You can find them on Etsy, you can find them online in a whole bunch of different places. People sell their STL files online all the time. So you don't have to worry about that. You don't need to be a 3D modeling engineer to be able to get into 3D printing, that is for sure. If you enjoyed this video, you'll probably enjoy this one too, all right? That's it for now, take care guys, bye-bye.